In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's Word, the epistle for the second week in Advent from Philippians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, for God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue. Friends in Christ, are you a bit worn out these days? I don't know if you're feeling a little bit worse for wear, just wanting to be home with loved ones, have a little bit less to do. Well, for better or worse, this is the end. End of the semester, except for possibly a lingering paper to turn in after today. It finishes today, last final exams. Maybe that's an answer to prayer. I feel like the dynamics of being a little bit worn out, wanting to be around loved ones, maybe converge a little bit in this text that we have today. And in a children's story, Paul talks with the Philippians about his affection for them and their close bond and about his prayer for them. And his prayer has a few different parts of it, but really, if you boil it down, One of the key parts of his prayer is when he says, it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more. A love that grows deeper than it is. So I want to use a children's story to kind of think through this for a few minutes. Do you know the story of the Velveteen Rabbit? It's almost 100 years old, 1922, Marjorie Williams wrote this classic children's story. Maybe it's so old you don't know it. This is actually Peter Rabbit, I think, but, um, but um, a velveteen rabbit, just did you, did you ever get one as a Christmas gift when you were little? Maybe it's been a really long time since you had a stuffed animal that you loved, that you played with, that you slept with that you loved so much, you wore it out. And that's kind of the story of the Velveteen Rabbit. See, there's this whole um, room full of toys that this young boy has. And there's this wise old rocking horse who's kind of dilapidated because he's really old. And he gives wisdom and insight to this young little Velveteen Rabbit when they talk about what it means to be loved by a child. And so their conversation goes like this. The horse tells the rabbit about being real. He says, real isn't how you're made. It's a thing that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up or bit by bit, asked the rabbit. It doesn't happen all at once. You become It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But all these things don't matter because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. The whole idea about love being real is that love means that you've 
gone through a lot. So I don't know, at this point in the semester, if you feel like you've gone through a lot, you're a little worse for wear, and that bright sunny day back in August when we started, and all the things that we've traveled through and experienced to get us to this point, Oh, there's a lot of other things that happen in the Velveteen Rabbit, and, and you really should read the story if you don't know it, that in, in the end, the toy Velveteen Rabbit actually does become real because that's magic and that's what happens in children's stories, but, but it's a tear through some very difficult circumstance that makes him real, that tear of love. I would contend that it's the difficult times where the love shines through the most, from God to us and from us to each other. That If you've had a rough semester, maybe you've had to rely more than you ever thought on God's love to help you through it and to get you to this point. Adversity, difficulty, a little worse for wear, tired, will be draggled. You show up at your parents and they say, man, you need a nap and a meal and a shower and rest. You say, yeah. The most abundant love that we receive, that we could pray for each other in Paul's prayer about love that could abound more and more, it flows from the love that is real the only love that is really real, the love of our Creator. It came into a world that is ruined, is not the way he originally created because we rebelled. It's a world that's still in some ways snarling, rebelling against its loving Creator, a world with no room for its Savior, but it's a love that was shown best in that world that was at odds with God. Because Jesus' love came out the clearest, the strongest, when he was, oh, more than worse for wear, beaten and bruised. That's the picture that we have of love, of a Savior dying on a cross. It's the hymn we sang It's the only Christmas hymn we really have that references Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection. Nails, spear, shall pierce him through, we sang. And that's the love of Christ that's been shown. So I don't know. If you have a little Christmas gift that you once received that you loved a lot, I had to dig this one out of a box in our basement from my sons when they were little. Because we discard those things. They last for a while. That's kind of the the dynamic, the, the tension in the Velveteen Rabbit story. But a love that's real, that lasts beyond the moment. That's the love that Paul prays about that we would have, that we would know, that we would experience, that we have this semester and that would continue on. So, if you're tired and you're here, it's not a bad combination because it's a sign that God has loved you through this semester. Did you hear that part in there, that famous well-known line, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion? So we're at the time of brought to completion, at least for the semester, not of all life. But that's what God does. He helps us not just survive, but thrive with the love that he has. So I don't know what gift you'll get this Christmas. I pray that you embrace the one that's been given and will continue to flow that love that may abound more and more. In Jesus' name, amen.